Hello. You probably recognize my face. But let me introduce myself in another role. Not as the, the actor, but Omar Sharif, the bridge player. For the next hour, you are going to be my partner playing the world's most fascinating card game. At the end of that hour, I will give you a bidding sequence and four possible hands that fit the auction. You will win a chance to accompany me on a Royal Viking Line bridge cruise just by choosing the hand you think my bidding has shown. What's more, I predict that by the end of this tape, you will pick the right hand. You're invited to Play Bridge with Omar Sharif, featuring the world's top-ranked woman player, Dorothy Hayden Truscott, and actor, author, and syndicated bridge columnist, Omar Sharif. First, let me tell you how I became a bridge player. When I was a boy, my parents occasionally needed a fourth, and I was it. I became a card pusher, but I was never really interested. Years later, when I became an actor, I found a great way to spend the long hours between takes on the movie set. I got hold of Charles Gorin, Bridge Complete, and grew more and more intrigued by the endless possibilities of this wonderful game. My fellow actors who could play, or thought they could, soon discovered that I was the best player in the game. <laughs> Since none of them was very good, I was the only one who realized how little I knew. But I was determined to become a champion. When my movie career blossomed with Lawrence of Arabia, I had the means to pursue my goal. I could afford to lose playing with the best players in the world, champions like Giorgio Belladonna, Benito Garozzo, and Pietro Forquet. They liked me, I know, but they loved me as a patsy, willing to be their pigeon in high-stakes games. It wasn't like uh, deliberately losing to Sophia Lauren in poker games on the set because I knew she hated to lose. Believe me, I don't have to try to lose against those bridge stars. They took care of that no matter how hard I tried to win. It was expensive, but I could afford it, and I learned. Perhaps not enough in those early days to be their equal. After all, these were the greatest players in the world. But I improved steadily. And eventually, they were prepared to accept me as a partner and teammate in events that involved important championships and even important money. In recent years, my partners have included not only great players, but famous people, royalty, cabinet ministers, famous entertainers. So what if none of them was among the world's great players? The beauty of bridge is that it appeals at whatever level you are playing. Now, through the electronic miracle of VCR cassettes, you are going to be my partner. And I guarantee that you will enjoy it and become a better player. But first, of course, we must agree on the system we're going to play. To tell you about it, let me introduce Dorothy Hayden Truscott, the world's top-ranked woman player. She has a tournament record that anyone would envy. Four world titles and the rank of Grandmaster. Thank you, Omar. Now let's get down to some bridge. Our system will be five card majors, all jumps by responder forcing, stamen, blackwood, and weak two bids. This means two clubs will be the only strong opening. Now let's bid. You're the dealer, Omar. One no trump. Here is your hand. Quite a blockbuster in the circumstances. It will be no surprise to you that the opponents do not bid this time. How do you respond to Omar's 16 to 18 point no trump opening? Push the pause button while you think. Have you decided what to bid? You have 19 points, so the combined point count is more than the 33 needed for six no trump. You could bid that directly, but you should really try to find out a little more. Perhaps you can bid a grand slam. I recommend two clubs, stamen, asking for a major suit. Two spades. Now take a moment to decide what to do next. What now? You know we have a 4-4 spade fit, and playing in spades should be worth an extra trick. If Omar has the ace of spades, and he probably does, we can try for the big money. Bid 4 no trump to ask for aces. Five diamonds. 
Good. He has the spade ace. Take a minute to decide what to do. There are at least 35 points, a solid 4-4 trump fit, all the side aces and roughing values. Let's go for the whole hog. Seven spades. Pass. Now you go around to my side of the table to play the hand. A spade is led and you must count your winners. Then plan your play to the first four tricks. If you draw trumps, you will find they break 3-2. Push the pause button while you think. Did you find 13 tricks? There are four short trump tricks and seven short tricks in the other suits. You need two more. You could take a heart finesse, a 50-50 chance. But two extra trump tricks will bring you home safely, so you should plan to rough two diamonds in your hand. Let's win the first trick with a spade 10 in dummy and cash the spade jack. Now lead a diamond to the king and a diamond back to the ace. Rough a diamond, lead to the club ace, and rough the last diamond. Note that your trumps are all high, so you can't be over roughed. Lead to the hard ace and draw the last trump. You can now claim the Grand Slam because your clubs give you discards for dummies, heart losers. You've scored six trump tricks and seven side suit winners. Here's the whole deal. If you drew three rounds of trumps at the beginning, you would go down. You would have to try the heart finesse and it loses. Now, some people only count losers. You should get in the habit of counting winners, too. Only winners take tricks. Next hand, please. One no trump. This would be another good hand for Stamen, asking for a major. But your right-hand opponent gets in the way. East over calls with two diamonds. Take a pause and decide what you will bid. Remember, Whenever partner bids one no trump, you are the captain. The right bid is three diamonds, a cue bid in the enemy's suit. At a high level, that would show control of the suit en route to a possible slam. At a low level, it simply shows a desire to play game, but doubt about which game. Here, it serves as a substitute stamen. Three hearts. This is easy. We found a good fit, and we raised to four hearts. Now, please move into my seat, partner, so that you can play the hand. You can afford to lose three tricks. At first sight, you seem to have two diamond losers and perhaps a spade. But there are breakers ahead. The king of diamonds is led, followed by the ace. Right-hand opponent plays the eight and then the two. Your left-hand opponent now continues with the diamond jack. Take time to think and decide what you will play from dummy on the diamond jack. All the missing diamonds must be on your left. The overcall of two diamonds suggested a six-card suit, and the high-low on your right suggests a doubleton. You could rough with a hard ten, but that's not safe. You may be over rough with a jack and eventually lose a spade trick. The safe play is to discard a spade, giving the opponents their third trick. That's all they will get, however, because you will eventually throw another spade from the dummy on the club king. Look at the whole hand. After West wins three diamond tricks, he leads a club. You take the ace and play three top trumps. Now you cash the king jack of clubs, throwing another spade from the dummy, and you are home. This is a classic example of a loser-on-loser -loser play. Now take a gold star if you discarded the spade from dummy at the third trick. Next hand, please. This time the opponents are silent. What should your opening bid be? Take time out to think if you want. One heart is correct. The alternative of two clubs is much too aggressive. If Omar has nothing, you won't miss a game. And if he has six points or more, he'll bid. I have and I will. One no trump. Okay, what do you bid now? Take a minute to think about it. I hope you chose four hearts. You should have a chance for 10 tricks. It would be chicken to bid only three hearts. 
Everybody passes and the opening lead is the Queen of Diamonds. Here is the dummy. When you're ready, tell me where you are going to win the first trick and what you plan to do at the second trick. Push the pause button while you study the two hands. If you're elected to take the heart finesse or the spade finesse, you risk defeat. Count your tricks. You deserve six hearts, two diamonds, and two spades. But you must make sure of the two spade tricks. Here is the full deal. The ace of diamonds is your only entry to the dummy, and you are in danger of losing a trick in each suit. The solution is to play spades at once. Win the first trick with the diamond king. Lead the ace of spades and then the queen. You're willing to lose a trick to the king, but then you are sure to be able to throw your diamond loser on dummy spade jack. Eventually, you can try the heart finesse for a possible overtrick. It won't materialize as it happens, but at least your contract is safe. Did you win the opening lead in your hand and lay down the spade ace a trick too? If not, do you see why you should have? Understanding your mistakes is the first giant step toward overcoming them. Next deal, please. You certainly can't complain that we give you bad cards. What are you going to bid as dealer? Take a minute to think. One club is correct. You have the right point count for one no trump, but the shape is wrong. Five, four, two, two is not an acceptable distribution. The opponents do not bid this time. One heart. He has at least six points and at least four hearts. Suit bids by responder are forcing unless they follow one no trump. You should continue to describe your hand. How? Take a moment to think. One spade is enough. Two spades would be an overbid, promising a game even if Omar has only a six-point minimum. Two hearts. How many hearts do you think Omar has? Think a little. Six or more. Bidding a suit twice virtually guarantees six. Omar's bid is discouraging, suggesting the final contract. What do you do now? Take a pause to consider. You have much more than you might have, so you should move toward game. Bid three hearts. This invites game and leaves it up to Omar. Four hearts. I hate to work if I can avoid it, so I want you to play the hand for me. The lead is the spade ten. We have to make an immediate decision in spades. Should we finesse? Take a moment to think. Don't finesse, just win with the ace. Now comes the moment of truth. Push the pause button while you decide your general plan and what you will do with the second trick. We have to assume a normal 3-2 heartbreak. If somebody has four trumps, we're sure to lose two trump tricks and at least two diamond tricks and we're dead. Trying to trump a diamond in dummy has some appeal, but the opponents can stop that by leading trumps. Think about winners for a moment. There's no shortage there. Five trumps, five clubs, and the spade ace give us more than we need. All we have to do is draw trumps, but how do we do it? It seems normal to cash the ace and king of hearts, but that would be disastrous. As soon as the opponents take their trump trick, they will score three diamond tricks. The secret of success is to lose a trump trick Quickly, lead a low heart from dummy at the second trick and play low from your hand. The remaining trump in dummy keeps the diamond suit under control. And as soon as you regain the lead, you draw trumps and run the clubs. Look at the complete deal.
when you realize that you must lose a trump trick, ask yourself whether it would pay to lose it quickly. Sometimes, as here, an early duck helps to keep control. Next hand, please. Pause a moment and select your opening bid. One diamond is right. You're not strong enough for one no trump. The opponents are silent. One spade. Now take a moment to decide on your next bid. One no trump is correct. Sometimes one raises with three cards, but this balanced hand suggests no trump. Three diamonds. Take time out, partner. Three spades is correct. You would have raised immediately with four cards, so this preference bids shows exactly three. If you do anything else, your partner will be entitled to assume that you have only two spades. Incidentally, Omar's jump to three diamonds was forcing. Four spades. Please come round to my side of the table and play the hand, partner. Take a pause to think. On the spade nine, dummy plays the two, and right-hand opponent plays the ten. Do you duck or do you win, and why? What is your plan? Push the pause button until you make your decision. Ready? You must win the spade ace immediately and lead a club to the ten. You have at least two sure losers in trumps and potential losers in hearts and clubs. The only chance is to get rid of your heart loser on dummies clubs. A heart openingly would have cooked your goose, but luckily they let a trump. Win the ace quickly before they shift to hearts, then finesse the club 10. This loses to the queen and the defense shifts to hearts. They're too late, but you must stay on your toes. Win the hard ace and lead a diamond to the ace. Now finesse the club jack. When it succeeds, as it is likely to do, throw your heart loser on the club ace. You've done the urgent business, so now you can lead a trump. Both defenders follow and the contract is safe. Here is the complete deal. Support your partner sooner or later with three trumps is the moral in the bidding. Now in the play, remember that there is often work to do before drawing trumps. Next hand, please. Three diamonds. Now the opponents do not do any bidding on this one. Take a minute to decide what Omar's opening bid means and make up your mind about your response. Omar probably has a seven card suit and as we are not vulnerable, his suit may be rather weak. Even so, we should have a chance for game. The obvious bid is three no trump. Pass. I put down my dummy and you can think about the play. West leads the club three and East plays the seven on dummies 10. Analyze the hand and then tell me which specific card you intend to lead at trick two. Push the pause button while you decide. If you said the queen or ten of diamonds, go to the head of the class. If you led any other diamond, you will be defeated because it means that you are leading from the dummy and have already made a fatal error. You should have won the first trick with a club ace. If you did play the club ace and then led diamonds, driving out the ace, you cannot be prevented from scoring dummies remaining diamonds. Dummies club honors will be an entry sooner or later. Look at the whole layout and you will understand why it is so important to play the club ace at trick one. Notice what happens if you win the first trick in the dummy. East will hold up his ace of diamonds for one round and lead a club. Whatever you do now, there is no entry to Omar's hand and the diamond winners wither on dummy's vine. But when the dummy goes down, you must try not to. Look before you leap. Next hand, please. This time the opponents do not interfere. You deal and must decide what to bid. Take your time. 
One spade is clearly right. You are much too strong to preempt. And you have too many losers for a forcing opening. Two spades. Take a minute to decide what that bid means and what you will bid. Omar's single raise shows a weak hand, about six to nine points, and at least three spades. We have a nine card fit, at least 23 high card points, and a singleton. There are no guarantees, but we should have a good chance to make 10 tricks. Bid four spades. Pass. Everybody passes, and the opening lead is the heart 10. Dummy plays low, and so does East. You win with the ace and do some thinking. Take a pause while you decide what to do at trick two. Congratulations if you led a diamond, any diamond. If you did that, the contract is safe. But if you did anything else, it's in jeopardy. Count your tricks. You deserve six spades, at least two clubs, and the heart ace for nine. If you play diamonds immediately, nothing can prevent you from roughing one diamond high for a sure 10 tricks. Another way to look at it is to count your losers. You have a possible club loser and three diamond losers. If you are speedy, you can trump one of these diamond losers in the dummy. Here's the complete deal. If you thoughtlessly lead a trump to the queen at the second trick and then lead a diamond, you may be in the soup. West is not blind. He can see that doubleton diamond in dummy and will lead trumps at every opportunity to prevent the rough. In skating over thin ice, your safety is in your speed. You must play diamonds immediately. Let me interrupt Bridge for a moment. I hope you're enjoying bidding and playing these hands with me, and there are more to come. But I want to remind you about your chance to win a fabulous Royal Viking Line Mediterranean transatlantic cruise with me, or any of the hundreds of additional prizes offered. <laughs> Not so long ago, I used to be invited to make free trips to almost any casino in the world. Not because I was a box office attraction, but because I was a heavy gambler. All the casinos knew that when I paid them a visit, I was sure to contribute, sometimes appreciably, to their profits. It took a long time for me to realize that I could never beat the house. So finally, I bought an interest in a casino in France and was delighted to be able to turn down all subsequent offers of free transportation. But our prize competition isn't like that. Your chance to win will cost you nothing. By the time you and I have developed our partnership and have reached the end of this cassette, I am sure you will be able to choose which of the four hands my bidding tells you I must hold. That is all you will have to do to earn your chance to win. Let's get back to bridge now. Okay, here's the next hand. You are the dealer. Take a pause to decide what you will bid. This is a close decision. Many would bid one heart, but I vote for one no trump. If you open one heart and partner responds one spade, you are stuck. There is no possible rebid, and you might as well jump out of the window. Skyscrapers make this dangerous, so in New York we recommend one no trump. What do you respond, Omar? Two clubs. I'll take time out, partner, to decide what to bid next. Damon again. Omar is asking for a major suit, so we obviously bid two hearts. He is captain and will probably make a final decision. Three hearts. That just invites game. He has transferred the captaincy back to us. Take a minute to decide what to do. We would pass with a minimum, but this hand is better than its high card count indicates. Bid four hearts. Here is my dummy. Take a moment to think about the play. The diamond jack is led. Where do you win and why? And what do you lead at trick two? Push the pause button and think about it. Ready? 
There are four possible losers, one in each suit. You have two chances, and you must take them in the right order. The obvious chance is the Trump finesse. The less obvious chance is to play West to have the club king. Then we can maneuver to avoid a diamond loser. Watch how it works. Win the king of diamonds and lead a low club. If West has the king, he will have to grab it. You'll play another diamond and you'll win with dummy's ace. Cash the club queen and lead a spade to the ace. Then we play the club ace, throwing the diamond loser from dummy. Now we are safe and we can try for an overtrick by roughing our last diamond and taking the trump finesse. Notice that if East held the club king, we could still try the trump finesse later. But if you take the trump finesse at the beginning, you have no second chance. If it loses, the defenders will score a diamond trick before you can do anything with the club suit. There's an old saying that bridge players walk barefoot because they forgot to draw trumps. But I believe there are more walking around who lost the shirts off their backs because they drew trumps prematurely. Next deal, please. The opponents are going to be silent this time. You have dealt yourself another powerhouse. You are obviously a great dealer. Take a moment to select your opening bid. In the modern style, this is slightly too strong for a two-no-trump opening, which would promise 21 or 22 points. Two clubs is correct. Two diamonds. That is the expected negative response. Omar is probably weak, but he might have a moderate hand that lacks a strong five-card suit. Take a moment to decide what you will do now. Two-no-trump, obviously. This shows that you have a balanced hand that was slightly too good for an opening to no trump. About 23 or 24 points. Omar is now the captain, and with a desperately weak hand, such as a solitary jack, he could even pass. What do you bid over two no trump, Omar? Three no trump. Naturally, you pass. Here is my dummy. Take a moment to think about the play. West leads the nine of diamonds. Obviously, you play low from the dummy. East plays the queen, and you are delighted to win with the king. What next? Take a minute to think. You can count eight sure tricks, four in diamonds, and two in each major suit. Both black suits offer a chance of a ninth trick. You could use the diamond ace to lead a spade or a club. But both those plays would be terrible. If you think about the club suit, you will realize that you certainly can establish one trick. But Dummy's only entry, the diamond ace, is crucial. At trick two, lead a club from your hand, either the king or the jack. If that goes against your grain, you'd better get a new grain. Watch what happens when you lead, say, the club king. One defender will win with the ace and probably shift to a heart. You will win and play the club jack. They can take the club queen, and dummy's ten is your ninth trick. The vital diamond ace is still there in the dummy as the entry to the club winner. Now look at the whole layout. You can see that if you had wasted dummy's entry in order to lead a spade or a club, you would be in big, big trouble. Short suits sometimes provide tricks. Don't overlook them. Next deal, please. Sorry, you can't expect to hold a blockbuster every time. This is known in the trade as a piece of cheese. West opens one club. Double. East raises his partner to two clubs. What do you do now? You pass, of course, and West passes. Double. East passes, and it's up to you. What do you do? Take time out.
two spades. Doubles of low-level suit bids are for takeout if the doubler's partner has never bid. The second double is just as much for takeout as the first, but shows a much better hand. You must bid here, and spades is all you can contribute. A pass would only be acceptable with length and strength in the enemy club suit, which you do not have. Four spades. This time we have a special request from the viewer. Will Omar please come around and play this piece of cheese himself? As Barbara Streisand said in Funny Girl, over my dead body. This is my tape and I'm supposed to be dummy. Here it is. West leads three high diamonds and shifts to the eight of hearts. What now? Take a pause and make your plan. Our only problem here is in the trump suit. We must hope that West has the king, and he probably does, because he opened the bidding. Omar clearly took this into account when he bid four spades. We must win the heart trick in our hand and lead a low trump, finessing the queen when West plays low. The queen wins, what now? If you are not sure, take a pause. Play the spade ace, an essential play. Your only chance is that the king will fall under the ace, and it does. Now lead another trump, and your jack collects east last spade. The rest is easy. Here is the complete deal. Notice that if you ever lead the jack of spades, West will cover with the king and you will be dead. Any attempt to enter your hand with a heart lead before playing the spade ace would not only be useless, but fatal, East would rough. Even a piece of cheese can make a good meal. A weak hand does not relieve you of the responsibility of responding to partner's takeout double. Next deal, please. Don't bid yet, there's gonna be some action ahead of you. East, on your right, bids one diamond. What do you do? Take time out to think. Double is indicated. This suggests an opening bid with at least three cards in each unbid suit. The opponents are silent. Two diamonds. In almost all positions, the Q bid in the opponent's suit below the game level just shows a desire to be in game. This is the only forcing bid that Omar can make. So what do you do now? Think a little. Two hearts. Omar wants you to describe your hand, so you bid your major suit. Four hearts. I put down my dummy and you can think about the play. West leads a diamond because his partner bid the suit. East takes two top diamonds and shifts to the spade eight. You win with the ace. What do you play next and why? Take a pause and make a plan. Obviously you must lose to the trump ace. The trick is to avoid a second trump loser. The opponents have five trumps, and if someone puts his ace on your king or queen, you will go down. You must try to arrange for the opponent with the ace to play it on air. This can be done if the player with the ace has exactly one other trump. Which opponent has the ace? Obviously, east on your right. He opened the bidding. Did you think along these lines? Take time out to review your plan of play. You must make the first trump play from dummy. To get there, cross to the queen of clubs, then lead a small trump. East would be foolish to play the ace. He will play second hand low and your king will win. Now, your only hope is that East has no more small hearts. So you lead a trump and play low from dummy. If that does not force the ace, you were dead however you played. If the ace 
is played on air, your queen will survive to draw West's last trump. Look at the complete deal. When you are playing, remember the bidding. If there is only one distribution that will help you, assume it exists. Next deal, please. One diamond. The opponents are silent this time. What do you respond? Take time out to decide. One heart is correct, forcing partner to describe his hand. A jump shift of two hearts is possible, but it wastes space. Two hearts. Well, this is a pleasant turn of events. Omar has a minimum opening with three or four card heart support. What do you bid now? Take a pause and work it out. Four no trump is correct. This is the perfect hand for Blackwood. A good fit, no void suit, no weak unbid suit, and enough strength to make a slam likely. Five hearts. He has two aces. So what do you do now? Take a minute. Six hearts is correct. If you use Blackwood and find the partnership has three aces, you must bid the slam. If three aces are not enough, then you were wrong to use Blackwood. Pass. Here is my dummy. Take a moment to think about the play. How annoying that West has led a club. With any other lead, you could draw trumps, concede a spade, and claim the slam. Now you are in trouble because the defense is ready to take a trick in each black suit. What can you do about it? Push the pause button while you make up your mind. Did you see it? There's no way now to avoid a club loser, but you have an even money shot to avoid the spade loser. You must hope that East has the diamond queen. Win the club king with the ace, and cash the king and ace of hearts. Then lead a diamond to the jack and hold your breath. The jack wins and you breathe out happily. The rest is easy. Cash the diamond king, enter dummy with a trump to the jack, and triumphantly discard the spade king on the diamond ace. Now give the defense a club trick and claim the slam. Look at the complete deal. If you need to find an opponent with a particular card, make the favorable assumption and go for it. Next deal, please. You deal yourself another good hand. Take a little time to decide what to bid. Not good enough for a forcing opening, so just bid one club. A possible alternative is an unorthodox three-note trump, but one club is preferable. One spade. What now? You have a difficult rebid. Take time out to think. You are much too strong for a jump to three clubs, which would be encouraging, but not forcing. Two no trump, showing a balance 90 to 20, is possible. But the perfect bid is three no trump. This shows a long, solid suit, stoppers in the unbid suits, and about eight playing tricks. If partner is interested in a slam, he should consider clubs or no trump. Pass. I put down my dummy and you can think about the play. West leads the heart two and East plays the king. You elect to duck and he continues with a heart jack to your ace. What do you play next and why? Push the pause button while you decide on your plan. Ready? Lead a high diamond and you will have nine easy tricks. 
any other play risks defeat. You know from the lead of the heart, too, that West started with at most four hearts. The defenders are welcome to take the diamond ace and three heart tricks. If you take a losing spade finesse, the defense will have five tricks. And if you run all your clubs, you will be cut off from your potential diamond trick. Here's the complete deal. When you are playing no trump, you should seldom be in a hurry to cash sure winners. Establish your slow tricks and save the quick ones as entries. Next, please. East deals this time and bids one spade. What do you do? Push the pause button while you think. When your right-hand opponent bids your suit, it is almost always correct to pass, and pass smoothly. What you hope for is a pass on the left and a reopening double from Omar. You plan to pass that, and poor East will lose his shirt, if not the farm. West also passes, and you hold your breath. Will Omar double? Two diamonds. Curses. He doesn't have the right shape for a double. In the balancing position, he may well have less than opening values. What should you do now when East passes? Take time out. Three no trump. This should be playable. We can't lie in the bushes forever. Pass. Here is my dummy. Take a moment to think about the play. West leads the spade seven. It's lucky he didn't lead a heart. East plays the eight, and you win with the queen. What now? Take some time to think. You have eight sure tricks and you need one more. The obvious chance is an even diamond break, which will give you more tricks than you need. Less obvious, but just as important and just as likely is the possibility of an even club break. Cash the ace and king of clubs. If both players follow twice, play a third round. If the two missing clubs appear, you have your ninth trick. If they do not, you can fall back on the diamonds. Here is the complete deal. Playing diamonds first only succeeds when the diamonds are 3-3. As the cards lie, it would be fatal. Play clubs first and you will succeed if either minor suit breaks 3-3. Why give yourself only one chance when two are available? Ducking a club to start with might work, but a clever defender could return a diamond and wreck your communications. Pass smoothly when an opponent bids your suit. Play thoughtfully when two suits offer prospects. If you have found the playing problem so far too easy, this final deal should put you on your mettle. This is a tough one. If you think two heads are better than one, show this hand to your cousin Algernon, the one who always claims to be such an expert. What do you bid as dealer? Take a minute. This balanced hand is worth a lot more than its face value of 22 points. You can add one point for a five card suit and two points if, as here, this long suit is solid. So we have the equivalent of 24, well worth an artificial two club opening. The opponents are not in the act this time. What do you respond, Omar? Two diamonds. The usual negative response, perhaps concealing some strength. What do you rebid? Two no trump, obviously. A balanced hand almost always bids no trump at its first or second opportunity. Four no trump. This is not Blackwood when it is a raise of no trump. Omar is captain and he is inviting slam. What do you do? Take time out. Bid six clubs. With the equivalent of 24 points, you have a maximum, but you can suggest clubs as an alternative to six no trump. Omar can always revert to six no trump if he doesn't fancy clubs. Pass. 
I put down my dummy and you can think about the play. West leads the Jack of Hearts. Study your prospects. What do you do at the first trick and what is your plan? Press the pause button while you make up your mind. If you play low from dummy, East will win with the king. He will then give his partner a rough and you go down cold before you get warmed up. You must put up the ace, of course, to prevent the rough. But you must still have a plan. If you have not quite decided which 12 tricks you plan to take and how you plan to take them, push the pause button again. The key move is to dump your queen of hearts under dummy's ace. Now you draw trumps. Cash the ace queen of diamonds. Next lead a heart to dummy's 10-9 and you will have the entry needed to score the king and jack of diamonds and discard your spade losers. You will collect five club tricks, four diamonds, two hearts, and a spade. Here's the complete deal. Look what happens if you forget to play the heart queen under the ace. After you've drawn trumps and cashed the ace queen of diamonds, you can't get to the dummy. If you lead the heart queen, East will duck and you are as dead as a dodo. Did you remember to drop the lady at the first trick? If you did, you have graduated this course with honors and you are well on the way to winning one of our prizes. Our time together is about up. Just one final reminder about our grand prize cruise. Some years ago, in an effort to promote bridge, I invited some of the world's best players to join me in the Omar Sharif Bridge Circus. Soon our tours were being commercially sponsored. And on one long trip, our sponsor was Lancia Automobiles. My team challenged the winners of elimination contests in four North American cities. On that disastrous tour, we were beaten three times, with each member of these winning teams getting a Lancia car. As I said somewhat ruefully at the party that had been arranged to celebrate the end of the tour, I am probably the biggest distributor of lunches in America. What's more, I'm still giving things away. By simply selecting which of the four hands we are about to show you is the one I must hold for the bidding sequence given, you can win a chance to accompany me on an 18-day luxury transatlantic cruise aboard the Royal Viking Sky, or one of the many other valuable prizes. Do send us your entry. This is hand A. This is hand B. This is hand C. This is hand D. Our bidding is gone. All you have to do to earn a chance at the transatlantic cruise with Omar or any of the hundreds of other valuable prizes is to address a postcard or an envelope to Omar Sharif, P.O. Box 4715, Springdale, Connecticut, 06907. Now this is important. Mark your choice, A, B, C, or D, on the address side of the envelope or card. Be sure to include your own name and address. Don't wait. Entries close midnight, January 15th, 1987. 
Winners will be chosen from a random drawing from all entries with the correct answer. That's all there is to it. No additional puzzles to solve, no playoffs, no ties to be broken. You can only win. I hope that you found our time together both rewarding and entertaining. I'm Omar Sharif. See you on board. Ourselves, so. You carry 920. I tell you. 920? Which That's is probably so wrong and is not subject to checking. Right. Oh, really. See, I can't win against women ever, 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 ever <laughs> in my life. Never. They always. How about with them? Well, you're not trying to compete against them. I'm trying very hard, but what can I do? I pass. I pass. Pass. One diamond. Pass. One spade. Pass. Pass. Two clubs. Two spades. Three clubs. Pass. Pass. Three diamonds. Pass. Three spades. Pass. Uh, who's face? Omar? Omar, I could have left it in diamonds, I but know. I think the camera would rather see you play. <laughs> <laughs>